building resilience as a leader on LinkedIn learning. From management training to understanding cryptocurrencies, from intelligent robot process automation to graphic design, course providers around the world have seen a surge of demand as professionals embrace a productive at-home alternative to box set binging. Josh Graff is the head of LinkedIn UK. We've seen a 50% week-over-week increase in learning content being streamed on LinkedIn Learning. Last week alone, that was 1.2 million hours around the world. And what's been particularly interesting for us is to see the difference in the type of courses that people took uh, prior to COVID and now during the pandemic. Uh, Before COVID, the top three global learning courses around the world last year were very technical. They were Excel, they were project management, programming. Today, it's pivoted towards productivity skills. Now it's about thriving at work, productivity tips, time management. So very different type of course that people are taking in light of the current pandemic. And there are certainly large numbers of people that sadly have been furloughed or made redundant. And in many cases, people have had to shut down small to medium businesses businesses that they own. And in many respects, I think that is what has driven the increase in learning on the platform over the last few weeks. Here in the UK, the spring has been glorious. How much more frustrating then for professional gardeners not to be allowed to travel to work. But in our new landscape of furloughing and working from home, they too are getting used to new ways of learning. The cottage garden was the original sustainable garden, and that was mostly due... This is a webinar on environmental sustainability in public gardens. There are dozens of professional horticulturalists attending, watching this opening presentation by Rebecca Slack, UK coordinator of the Plant Network, poised with their questions and comments. So here's my question for Rebecca. How do these online sessions meet the needs of people who really want to be getting their fingernails dirty in the garden itself? We've always provided training courses, usually in-garden training courses, to professional horticulturalists. It's just a different format. We're just having people, instead of being face-to-face, are on the screen. And professional horticulture is, is very much about learning new skills and new practices and sharing the results of the latest research. And some of that can't be done with dirty fingers. You do need to sit down and talk and learn. And we're just doing that in a slightly removed way. In terms of light at the end of the tunnel, some people are going to go back to gardens that are going to need a lot of extra work. Yes, there's going to be a huge backlog of work. And also because most of our members are public gardens and they'll be opening to the public. So they'll be managing visitor expectations and this backlog of work. So it's going to be tough. So that's why we're providing training now. And it's a good opportunity to network so that people can learn new ways, maybe, of approaching their garden when they get back into it. Quick fixes, if possible. This course is terribly important because we're confronted with an unprecedented outbreak, lots of uncertainties, and it's going to be very important that as many people as possible understand what is going on Professor Peter Piot at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, welcoming subscribers to a course offered on futurelearn.com entitled COVID-19, Tackling the Novel Coronavirus. The course is designed for healthcare professionals, as well as anyone interested in how we should respond collectively.